Welcome inside episode 624 of the Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba, alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains, and we are about to introduce you to what? Our seventh draft pick from the 2020 draft? Yeah, we pretty much got the 2020 draft covered. It's Roby Yarventi. He joins us, and he we get into a lot of good stuff. His off-season, World Juniors, and we finish off the conversation with a, a fun Finnish tourism uh, section of it. So stay tuned for that. Lots of good stuff from Roby. He's just an awesome dude. I think you guys are really going to enjoy this interview, and it's all brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. More props, odds, and lines than ever before. Visit BetOnline.net. It's where the game starts. And now the show starts. This is the Locked On Senators podcast. Your team every day. Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Senators your first listen. On this Friday, September 2nd, we are free and available on all platforms, including... On YouTube, where the best way you can help the show grow is to like the video by clicking the thumbs up and subscribing to the Locked On Senators channel. Pillsy had to run. We just recorded our tier two of our organizational value rankings, but he had to run off to work. He does join me for this interview, though, and I think we should almost get right to it. It's absolutely fantastic. And I think this is one you'll want to watch on YouTube because Roby just might be the most like casual, nonchalant dude we've ever had on this show. So I'm expecting that uh, we'll get some fun reviews on this one. And I think Roby will find his way a little deeper into the hearts of certain Sens fans who maybe don't know him or aren't as familiar with his game. So before we get to that though, DJ Smith did talk on TSN 1200 yesterday. And there were a couple interesting notes. First is what plan B is. We know that plan A, at least up front, it's Josh Norris, Brady Kachuk and Drake Batherson. And then the second line is Tim Stutzla, Alex DeBrinkett, and Claude Giroux. How long till those flip? That's a story for another day. But I did find it interesting that DJ Smith alluded to the fact that at some point, he wants to try Claude Giroux as the winger with Josh Norris and Brady Kachuk. And why that's so interesting is the easy answer whenever it became, why why make it the way that obviously everyone agrees should be the first try, is because Giroux can help Timmy with face-offs somewhere that he certainly struggled. There's no denying it uh, in the last couple of seasons, the first two years of his career. So with putting Batherson on that line, you're, you're taking away that opportunity. And maybe at that point, Timmy's going to be a little more comfortable with taking face-offs. Who knows? But I found it interesting. Now, if we're going to dig a little a little deeper into why it's, it's going to be this case, as I pull it up here on YouTube, um, just the, the line combos on Twitter at Send Central uh, is where you can find the show. Oops, there you go. Um, but what you're seeing here is you're moving the power forwards on each side. And I know Batherson and Kachuk both have playmaking ability as well. But this way, you're having like one big body on each line and then a playmaker and then a score. Obviously, Norris and Dabrinkit being the scorers, Giroux and Stutzla being the setup men. So I actually kind of like it, you know? Like, there's... There's a, it's a little bit uh, curious because I think a lot of people would have said that the easy answer would be, you know, move to Brinkett or, or even, you know, move Kachuk onto that line with, with Timmy because they had a bit of chemistry at least. But so did Batherson uh, with Timmy. But, um, oh, man, I can't wait to watch Timmy cook. Timmy was actually on with uh, Elliot Freeman, 32 Thoughts, and just got me so fired up. Mentioned that the idea of signing long-term with Ottawa is something that really excites him. And I think all Sens fans, can only be ecstatic to hear that. The other new news uh, note that we got from DJ Smith was that Thomas Shabbat will start next season with Artem Zoo. Yes, yes. Uh, hold your applause. I know that it's easy to, to be really excited about that, but who's going to play with Jake Sanderson then? Because obviously it would have been a fun little connection to have Jake Sanderson and Artem Zub, the stabilizer Artem Zub, uh, starting together. Of course, things can change at the drop of a hat, but... DJ Smith releasing a little bit of what he expects to start the season with for the Ottawa Senators when they head to training camp. Now, <laughs> it seems like training camp may as well have started at the Sensplex. Everyone's so fired up, um, you know, taking selfies. I, I think Alex DeBrinkett's probably taken 150 selfies, is my guess, with, with all the fanfare that's going on. And if you're listening to this and you've been there, that's awesome. Keep posting it. 
the, the players have to be so excited. I just did uh, Jets at noon today. That's why the uh, the podcast is coming out a little bit later at work. And one of the writers, uh, somebody wrote in being like, none of the Jets are, are at MTS Iceplex yet. Like, nobody's in town. Should we be worried? And in my head, obviously, I didn't say it, but I was like, man, Ottawa's like half their team is already in Ottawa. So, um, Sens fans, the players are excited. And keep showing your excitement for them. And we're going to, I mean, continue to deliver seven shows a week right now. We've already got two great, yes, I'm calling them both great, behind the blog episodes exclusively on our YouTube channel this upcoming weekend with Sends Prospects on Saturday and Sends Talk on Sunday. Sends Talk is like the perfect guy for this whole idea of giving a platform and explaining why people got into blogging and covering the team. He was 10 years old when he started his YouTube page. So great conversation with him. And then Henry, of course, if you know us, you know Henry at Sends Prospects is uh, is going to do a prospect pyramid with that. So stay tuned for that. Those are going to be released at 11.30 a.m. each day. They're going to premiere. And I'm going to try to join you in the premiere. And uh, we can chat in the comments, all that. But uh, it will be available on demand after. And then as I mentioned off the top, Pilsy and I just recorded Tier 2 of our organizational value rankings that will be released on Tuesday, but we're putting out a video every single day leading up to the season. We've got our biggest guest ever coming on next Friday. There's just exciting times right now with the team, with the show, with everything. And I hope you can feel that excitement too. I felt that excitement so much. I had to go to bet online. You know, our friends at betonline.net. That's the one stop shop for everything you need like all the latest football league developments. You're probably doing your fantasy draft. So it's the number one source for all that game matchups, news podcasts, including the opening games of the upcoming year. Bet online is also your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. It's betonline.net where the game starts. All right. Why don't we get to our interview. It's very fun with Finnish silver medalist, and we'll, we'll touch on that right away, and Belleville Senators forward, it's Roby Yarventi. All right, we now welcome a very special guest, the native of Tampere, Finland. This young sniper grew up in the Eels organization before making the jump to Belleville after being selected 33rd overall in the 2020 NHL draft by Ottawa. As one of the youngest players in the AHL, he's racked up 36 points through 74 games and is poised to break out after being named one of Finland's top three players during a silver medal performance at this summer's World Juniors. Roby Jarventi, welcome to Locked On Senators. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing good. Thanks for inviting me here. Was that sigh with the silver medal? I wanted to ask you, at what point does it become an impressive accomplishment? I know you, you lose the last game, it doesn't feel good, but... Man, silver medal is, is a very impressive performance. Yeah, when you think it think think it like like that, it, it's a big thing. Not like it's probably not the big big thing for me yet, but I think it will be. It yeah, will be that's some fair. someday. Yeah, too soon yeah. for now. And, and yeah. especially like you had a different experience as well, like getting to do the World Juniors in the summer. Like, what was that like uh, compared to last time you were at the World Juniors when it was in uh, not in the summer? Yeah, it was pretty tough for start just to start playing playing hockey again in like before August. So yeah, it was different, but it, it's yeah, it was different, but it was kind of fun to, to start playing and. Uh, I think it's good for me, and I'm, I had I've played played a couple of games now, and going to the camp. I think it's it's a good thing for me. Are you going to be at a rookie tournament, or have you graduated from that? Yeah, I'm going to be there. Nice. Okay, that's awesome. We're excited to to see you there. I, I one last question here. Leading up to the World Juniors, how early did your team get together? Was it just like a week or two, or had you guys been training maybe all of August? Uh we got her up like. What's the seventh month? It's July. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Like twenty first of July. And then we had a week week long camp here. And then we had a couple days off. Then we flew to Edmonton and uh, practiced there for a week before a tournament. So quite a while. Yeah, no doubt. Well, man, your tournament was awesome. I mean, as a team, we already talked about, but individually you finish off with nine points. You have points in the first five games, including four 
against Germany in the quarterfinals. Uh, one from your patented spot. We actually spoke with Igor Sako right before um, that game. And he's like, Roby's shot from that spot is money. And then I turn on the TV and there you are standing right there. But the one part, and I sent you a DM with it. Are you okay? We saw you had a little mishap on the bench. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, no one's probably going to believe me, but I was so frustrated be- because I missed those couple chances that, like shift before, so I actually like meant to do that. It just looks like I <laughs> looks like I didn't. So <laughs> nice. yeah, it's kind of funny. Looks if funny. You missed, if you missed the clip, Laleem's Martian tweeted it out. Uh, Roby just goes head over heels right off the back of the bench, but that was <laughs> he that just was needed great. some some alone time, some personal space there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. So you grew up in the uh, Eels organization, all time logo, by the way, one of my favorites. I yeah. tried to order a jersey, the shipping was ridiculous, huh. but that's a story for another day. What was it like getting to the, the Liga level where the atmosphere is wild? Was that always a lifelong dream of yours to play there? Yeah. Yeah. Was, of course, like my dad played there, so I always wanted to, wanted to play there myself too. So, yeah. That was probably like, yeah, my biggest dream was like to play, play with my hometown, hometown team and came, came, came through that one year I played like five games. So, that was pretty amazing. Awesome. And hey, so wait, because then the next year was uh, was with COVID. So it probably wasn't the same same atmosphere. Is that what you're, you're getting at there? Yeah, the COVID. Right. Because you played uh, you played the COVID year with Eels as well. But I guess there's yeah. no fans. Right. So it yeah. wasn't as, as much fun. Yeah, it was pretty boring. Like <laughs> those first five games, it was pretty sick. And then the next year we had like those first probably five five ten games we had fans there and after that we played without fans so it wasn't that fun after that but so when you made the jump to Belleville what goes into that decision where you feel like you're ready to come over is the organization saying hey we want to you know work with you on a day-to-day basis what goes into coming over and ultimately playing this whole last year with Belleville yeah probably both I had those I think it was four games that after the season here uh, I felt pretty good there, and uh, of course, the team wanted me to like come there, and uh, I made a decision like during the summer that I think I'm ready to hop in there and trying to pr- prove myself there. So, probably both. Yeah, I mean, you had three points in four games, so you must have felt uh, pretty good making that transition. Now, uh, obviously, the the easy answer is the the size of the ice uh, when it comes to the difference between playing in Liga and AHL. But other than that, what was kind of your first impression of heading to uh, the AHL after having spent uh, your whole life in Finland? Yeah, of course, the games much like tougher. Those tougher guys, uh, there's much more, much more speed there, and uh, you're not gonna get get away with. A lot of mistakes there, and uh, you're gonna you're gonna hear it from Manor if you make mistakes. So oh, yeah. that's probably the biggest things. I'm glad you brought up Troy Mann because again, we spoke to a lot of the guys th- this summer, like Angus, Igor, Casty, all those guys. Just mentioned that he- he's easy to talk to, but he's hard on you too. What is what has your experience been like with with Troy for the last year and a bit? Yeah, a little bit same. Uh, he he always just wants wants the best for. the for, for the players and uh yeah he sometimes he's pretty hard for me but that's that's just a good thing and it proves that he, he cares about the players so what is he asking you to work on the most in your game coming into next year probably just like an overall game like just to be better on like both both ends of the ice and uh yeah just to be like be in good shape and be faster and stronger when i come to camp so I think those those are the things he wants. Bells? Yeah, that's, um, I mean, the thing I think most people don't realize about you, uh, Roby, is your size. Like, you're you're known for your shot, especially we saw it in the World Juniors. What um, what can you use your size to get in those uh, hard-to-get areas so that you can get your shot off? Like, how much of that goes into your game? Yeah, I, I could be, like, a little, little meaner on the ice, like, just be like tougher to play against and maybe throw in some couple checks once in a while. So I think I could play like more like a power forward when, when is, the season is, starts. So. 
Is that something that uh, maybe a guy like Igor, you can watch what he does? I know his frame's a little bit thicker, but you guys have a lot of similarities in terms of getting your shot off. I mean, you guys on either end, like lefty, righty on, on the power play, that's something to watch in itself. But um, is there a, p- a piece of one of your teammates, whether it's him or someone else, where you're watching maybe one of the leaders and trying to incorporate that into your game? Yeah, and just just watching those older guys and how, how they play at their tough to play against so those are good examples for me and uh yeah could be be tougher and uh, when i get more more like strength strength and power so i think that'll that'll make it easier yeah and this past season uh i mean i'm looking at uh, your game logs right now and you played 70 games with the belleville senators that's much more than you're used to playing in any of the other leagues how much of an adjustment was that for you especially with covid shortened seasons and stuff like that and bouncing around uh between different leagues like how much of an adjustment is it to go to playing a, a full season in the ahl or did you find that was a positive thing. You were able to kind of get more consistency and work through the ups and downs of a season. Yeah, it was pretty hard for start. Uh, yeah, I haven't haven't used to play play that much, but yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the schedule is so tough in there, and uh, like you're not fresh fresh every game. So yeah. it was, sometimes it was pretty hard for me to like be at my best and uh, I had those stretches when like I played good for 10 games and then I absolutely sucked for next 10 so I think the consistency is like like the biggest biggest thing for me is to do like improve and of course the schedule is tough so you gotta be in good shape to play there when you're going through those tough stretches, I, I'm sure that the coaches are, are helping you out. But do you have to remind yourself that you're, you, I believe when you came over for those first four games, you were the youngest player in the entire league. And then still being a teenager in the AHL level, you don't often see it. Do you sometimes have to remind yourself? I know you played against men in Finland, but it's obviously a little different. And as you said, meaner with the physicality over in North America. Yeah, sometimes I I just forget, like, I'm 19 years old uh... I, I was 19 and uh, like, yeah, that's that's a tough league. And like sometimes after games, I was just swearing on myself. And Lassie was like, just relax, buddy. You're, you're 19 years old. So, <laughs> Is it important yeah. having Lassie there with you, a guy who I know you played in Eels with? When did you guys meet, by the way? How long have you known Lassie for? We we know for a long time. I think we, we played together for the first time in like, was it? Under 18 years, okay. so we we played in the same team like probably was it seven years ago or something. So that's so cool. Was yeah. he the first guy that called you when you got drafted? Yeah, he was first first guy to text. I think he texted me something like congratulations and that, nice to that, have you there. But yeah, that's awesome. I know it's been a little while, but we always like to ask guys about their draft experience. Where were you when yeah. you uh, found out that Ottawa picked you? Uh, I was actually at home. We had a dinner with my family and my agents, so we were just watching a draft there. Yeah. Did Did you think Ottawa was a team that was interested in you? Uh, I didn't actually have much clue. Uh, okay. I talked with them a couple of times, and we had a good chats, but I I absolutely didn't have like no clue who's going to pick me up. But yeah, it was a nice surprise. Yeah, how busy was that period, especially like where you went in the draft? It, it's like right when it opens up, right? Start yeah. of the second round. I think you're the second yeah. pick or, or third pick in the second, second round. Pick, like yeah. how many teams were – how busy was that time leading up? Because that would have been all on Zoom at, at that time in, in COVID. Okay. Oh, can you repeat the question? Yeah. Oh, I, I was just saying like how many teams were you talking to every day leading up to the draft? Were you b- pretty busy then? Yeah, it was It was a m- lot, a lot of teams. So yeah, I didn't have a, a clue who's gonna pick me up. So, is that nerve wracking? I mean, that's your whole life is where you're gonna go. Yeah, yeah, it was, <laughs> it, was, it was a busy time, and we had like two Zoom calls every, every day. So, how uh, how are you adjusting to to living in, in Belleville? What uh, what do you think of the some of the cultural differences, or um, are you are you getting used to all the differences that Ontario has? Yeah, it's actually like the weather and weather and stuff are pretty same. Of course, it's it's a little smaller city that I'm used to living, so it was, sometimes it's hard to find anything to do there. But <laughs> it's it's been, it's been pretty nice, and I 
I've liked it there. So yeah, it's been a Bell- good experience. Belleville is a, ni- a nice town, and hey, there might not be a lot to do uh, do around, but it helps you focus on your game, right? Like you're, yeah. you're not gonna, there's not too many distractions, so you can just hone yeah. in on your skills and that, and uh, that's great. When you're in Belleville, uh, do you stay with Lassie, or what's your living situation? No, I I had my own place there. Okay. We had like a big house, and uh, actually Lucini lives like upstairs, and I live downstairs nice. there, so... Let, I, I want to talk to you about Jake Lucini because this is a guy <laughs> I I loved what I saw from Jake Lucini last year. And yeah. he's a guy that kind of came from Laval without too much people knowing too much about him. What did he mean to to your team? We just talked to to Mando uh, recently, actually, and he had a lot of praise for Jake Lucini. I'm wondering what uh, what you thought of him. Automatic in the shootout, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's good. Um, Yeah, he's probably one of the best teammates i've had he's always happy and like brings like good en- energy to the locker room and of course he had an unbelievable season yeah. uh had a lot of points there and uh yeah he he means a lot of lot to our, our team and I, I i'm happy that like he comes back to belleville uh, yeah he's yeah, a, he's a big that. player to us Oh, 100%, man. I love the the chemistry that uh, you guys are all developing here as it seems like uh, towards the end of the year, you guys had that great push to the playoffs. And I mean, what can you do? You're coming home in the playoffs after an overtime loss and all of a sudden facing elimination. I've, I've said yeah. my piece about what that is. And hopefully next year, it's a, it's a little bit uh, more normal yeah. in terms of the playoffs and, and all that. And uh, we also hope that you're making your NHL debut next year. Now, you mentioned your dad played for Eels. You played for Eels. And now I believe your brother's playing for Eels and he's also a top prospect for the upcoming NHL draft. What kind of advice do you have for him going into what's going to be a pretty important year? Oh uh, yeah, not, not much, not much. Just like to play. He's pretty good. So he, he, know, he knows how to play and just, just to be, be himself there. He is, he's a young guy. And like, of course, a lot of people is watching him now just to, just to be like calm and, calm and stuff so yeah he's, he's a good player and it's nice to see him playing on the list too is he similar to your style or what's your scouting report <laughs> i think he's just the opposite he's he's like a small small and quick quick on, okay. on his feet so but yeah he's he's skilled and he has he has a great shot too so it's nice nice to follow him playing yeah, that's that's awesome. Now I want to get back to your time in Belleville. We don't need to talk about the playoffs. Ross no, and I don't let me. are not are not happy with the way uh, the AHL format of their playoffs. So we're not going to get into that. What what I'm interested in though, and uh, we talked to Igor about this. What was it like leading up to the playoffs? Because Belleville never had made the playoffs in franchise history. Been close. COVID had canceled a couple of good <laughs> opportunities. What was it like those? two, three weeks leading into the playoffs where every game was pretty much a must win. Like <coughs> Igor was telling us that uh, Troy Mann really had you guys fired up for every match. Yeah, he had. Uh, but yeah, our... probably for the last, last month or two, we had to basically what's this like standings after every game and yeah. like yeah. we need to win today. So yeah, it was, it was tough. And uh, like uh, we had a, we had a great team. I believe we could, if we would have like won those couple overtime games, we could have like won the next series or two or something. We 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 believe. I believe too, in yeah. our team. We had, we had a great team. We had like good combination of like the older guys and young guys. And too shame it like was that short, but yeah, so ridiculous. And I, I can't I can't even imagine because we spoke with Lassie like right before the playoffs, and he's like I said. This is I said. This is the dumbest question you're ever gonna hear. Would you rather go past this uh, this initial buy and go right in? And he's like, No, I want to play. He's like, Because yeah. you guys had a big break, I think, right before. And he's like, We've had yeah. our break already. We want to play games, and then I mean, two games. It's it's not even enough time to start, let alone finish. Now, no. my final question for you, Roby, and we got the story from Igor. We've confirmed with Angus and Mando. I need the uh, boots on the ground. Uh, your your take on the fight in practice between Casty and Soko? Were you like just get out of the way? Where were you when that broke out? Yeah, I was just standing on a line, and I don't know with who. I was just laughing. <laughs> They're like, "Oh my god, <laughs> two big boys, eh?" Yeah, 
<laughs> two huge guys. So yeah, it was it was fun to watch. And I think those were just the times we had like uh, we were losing games and stuff, and everyone was just so mad at coming at three and practicing. So, Philzy, what did yeah. Igor call it? He he called it what? a stink, stinky practice. It was a stinky practice, <laughs> yeah. and the battles got intense. So that happens. How did was it? Was it kind of a thing where they had their fight, they got it out of the system, and their buddies right again, or was it was it the rest yeah. of the day a little tense? Yeah, they were. I think they just shake, shake hands after a fight and like good, good lads. Of, like so, sometimes it's just nice to see like guys just is battling battling a lot and like. After, after everything, they just like care about each other. So yeah, yeah. That, was, so, that was just probably the positive thing for us. And like, yeah. so next year, if there's a downtime, it's gonna be you and Lassie at center ice. <laughs> Pro- probably not. <laughs> Who wins that fight? Uh, I I gotta say, shit, say me. All right, all right. <laughs> nice. hey, you're on record now, uh, hey. Roby. Uh, last thing, what what are expectations next year? Uh, is is playing your first NHL game on on your goal list? What else are you looking to accomplish this upcoming season? Yeah, of course. I I, I just trying to go there and just like uh, how do I say? It? Just like get a good start there. Uh, I think I finished the year good. Those top two. Couple, couple last games. I'm just trying to get a good start and play, play good in Belleville and like play with my strengths. Uh, like, I this is probably the first year like there's, like I'm facing like the same competition like in like many years. So now I'm like I know what's waiting for me. So that's probably a good thing, and just just to play good and play my strengths and like become better player every day and like hope that hope those first NHL games come someday. But yeah, not not much of like expectations, just try to become better. No, that's a great answer. Phil? Yeah, we're, we're rooting for you. That's for sure. Now, final question for me, Roby. Uh, thanks for giving us so much of your time. We really appreciate it. Now, I've been to Norway. I hear a lot about Sweden, but I don't hear much about Finland. So what can you tell us? And we always joke that I'm going to take a scouting trip over to Finland. <laughs> if I'm going to Finland, where do I need to go? Like, what's what's the hot spots to go to to see in Finland? Because I'm going to make that trip to Finland eventually. So I need to start a list here. Uh, you should come to Tambor. It's It's a pretty nice, like, it's not... Helsing is much bigger, okay. bigger than Tampere. It's like how do I say? It? It's like a big city, but it's not not too big. It's, it's like the you should go probably fishing here or something. Okay. A lot of guys fish here, and like there's a couple of good coffee shops here. Like I I don't know how to say it in English, but it's like huge tower and they so so good like donuts. Probably, nice. probably that, and it kind of looks it kinda, beautiful. It kind of looks like Ottawa with the canal. Yeah. Wait, can I see it there? Yeah, you want me to zoom in? Can oh, you see I that? See. What's that downtown? Yeah, and there's those. Is that those towers there on the background? Yeah, it's like a mini CN it? tower. Just okay, cool. <laughs> a lot smaller, but. I like it. A little, a little bit of rolling hills in the oh, background. There we We're taking go. a tour of Tampere right now. Let's go. <laughs> it's a nice... There's the tower. It's oh, like an, an amusement sweet. park. Yeah, I should go there. All, All right. right. It's, you, it's on the list. I'm going. Let's go. Do you, know where, do you know where Lassie told us to go, Roby? He said, go check out the arena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's that's pretty nice, too. It's like when they, they was ready for last, last year, I think. I think oh, it's, it's, the it's brand. It's brand new. Yeah, it's okay. the biggest in Europe or something. It's, oh, it's pretty okay. sick. So, so he wasn't just saying that. There's actually yeah. good good reason to go there. It, it's nothing like CAA Arena though. No, <laughs> come on. No, nothing's better than CAA Arena. There, there you go. go. We'll leave it that, Roby. We appreciate you joining us. We look forward to a fantastic upcoming season for you, and all the best in the future. We we'll look forward. We'll do this again down the road. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Stick taps to Roby for joining us. Really great conversation. I'm excited to watch him cook this year from the top 
of the right circle, just hammering one-timers away as he does so well. Now, before we continue, I just want to tell you an important message from NHTSA. It's never okay to drive stone. If you feel different, you drive different. Drive high, you'll get a DUI. It's never okay. Do you think it is? Some people, they do. What They think, what's the worst that could happen? You end up driving below the speed limit? It's no big deal, right? Wrong. The truth is your reaction times slow way down when you're high. You not only put yourself in danger, but everyone around you. Talk about a buzz kill. Stop kidding yourself. It's not okay to drive high. If you've been using marijuana in any form, do not get behind the wheel. If you feel different, you drive different. Drive high and get a DUI. All right, wrapping up this Friday show, I already teased what we have coming up this weekend and next week. Monday is going to be Kevin Mando Lazy. Unreal chat with him. We had so much fun off, off air with him too, but he uh, he springs up the rankings after we chat with him uh, if we hadn't done them already. But no, he's coming back from an injury. We get into the ECHL, what, uh, what he learned playing down in what they call the jungle uh, when he was with the Gladiators and what lessons he can bring with him to the NHL. Obviously, we nerd out on some goalie gear stuff. We ask him about what's upcoming this season, all of that and more. And then what else can we get into in, in Sens land? Oh, I asked a, a question on Twitter at Sens Central. This is actually, to me, it's interesting. It seems like it's a little bit more lopsided. I'm going to pull up. I did two polls this morning. Holy, get going crazy. Um, the first poll, and Tim Stutzel, I'm going to tell you the direct quote that he said on Elliot Friedman and Jeff Merrick's 32 Thoughts podcast, recorded in Paris. Quote, I love Ottawa. I love the city. I love the guys. I'm really committed to signing long-term, maybe, and I'm going to be looking forward to joining them for there for a long time. Now, some people pointed out the word maybe in there, and that's fair. However, if you go listen to it, and I would recommend everyone goes and checks out that podcast, you can tell that he he really is, I believe at least, he really is just English second language, just, uh, you know, you have those filler words like, you know, um, but I think that it's it's a very good sign. So coming off of that, he also had a great line here. I'll, I'll let everyone read it there. Uh, just saying he loved every second of Brady Kachuk's playoff shenanigans. But as we continue to scroll up, here it is. Who gets a higher AAV on their next contract? Is it Alex Dabrinkit? Or Tim Stutzla, both with only one year left. Now, Alex Dabrinkit is probably the favorite. And I understand why it has 60% because his qualifying offer is $9 million. Is Timmy going to get more than $9 million? I don't know. I still think he's going to pop off this year. But on the heels of, of Timmy saying that, I said if they offered him eight years at $8.5 million today, who says no? 61% say fair deal. But I think a lot of those people are sitting here as a fan being like, yeah, I'd love to have him. It is more on projection than what he's done so far. But I'd probably be on the side of, of Timmy saying no. And that's 22%. That's in second. And then too much too soon, 16% are saying that. Now, when it comes to Timmy saying no, I think it's a little bit easier to say no just to say it than actually when somebody's offering you a guaranteed $68 million over the next eight years. So that's just something to think about as we head into the weekend and go have your say on Twitter at Send Central. You can also follow the show on Instagram, locked on dot senators there. Follow back every account that follows us on Instagram. And please subscribe to the YouTube page. It goes a long way for the show. And we really, really do appreciate it. So for Brandon Pillar and Roby Jarventi, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the Locked On Senators Podcast, your team every day. <laughs>